from wherever, whenever you are listening to me, this is Michael Vaughn, and welcome to Fundamentally Speaking. You have arrived at the right place to be encouraged and challenged in the Word of God as you deal with life today. In this podcast, I take fundamentals found in the Word of God and expound on them in ways you may not have considered to help you grow in your walk with Father God. A Father God has called you with a purpose to fulfill, and whatever that purpose is, with a spiritual life built on the fundamentals of God's word, you will be able to execute it. That is what this podcast will help you to do. So if you're not driving, operating on heavy equipment or on people, I encourage you, get something to write with, something to write on, and don't forget your Bible as I launch into our topic for today on Fundamentally Speaking. You are who you align with. God says you are. We need to align with God and say what he says so we can be who he has purposed and called us to be. Does God have a purpose for our lives? Absolutely. Has God spoken over us who we are? Absolutely. But we continue to agree with how we feel. We continue to agree with what our situation says. We continue to agree with what people around us say. Listen, you need to get with Holy Spirit and understand who he has made you and only say what he says about you then and only then can you be what God has said you can be hallelujah 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 God says I'm the head I'm the head I may feel like I'm at the bottom my situation may look like I'm at the bottom hallelujah but if God said I'm the head I'm the head and I'm not gonna tell anybody that I'm not he says I'm above I'm above hallelujah I may be the janitor in the building, but I'm above. I'm the best janitor this company ever had. I'm the best janitor in this entire city. I'm the best janitor in this entire state. Are you hearing me? I am above glory to God and I'm not beneath. I don't care how the world looks at me. It matters how I look at myself because my father said I'm above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. It doesn't care if my bank account doesn't have as many zeros behind the number as yours does. He says I'm the lender and not the borrower. Yes, I may have a mortgage. Yes, I may have a car note. Yes, I may have student loans, but I am the lender and not the borrower. That is my current state. It's not my continual state. Are you here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to align with what God says. There's power in our words. Because get this, when you start getting your mindset flowing with the mindset of Holy Spirit, Get in your mind flowing with who God says you are. Your life will begin to track with that. You begin to find solutions that will help you get out of debt. You begin to find solutions that will help you elevate and increase. Why? Because you're living according to who God says you are. And your words begin to dictate and create that environment create listen people who have understood who god said they are the reason why when they actually get the manifestation of that head get the manifestation of that lender get the manifestation of being about the reason why they are not all like ooh, excited nor are they surprised is because they've been living there all along hallelujah When you catch the revelation of who you are in God and the manifestation of that comes to pass, it may come to pass a year down the road, five years down the road, 10 years down the road. You are not surprised. You are not. Oh, God. No, because you've been living there from day one. (laughs) My God. Let me let you in on a secret here. I've got a few minutes left. Let me let you in on a secret here. I firmly believe that I'm a general in the kingdom of God. I really do. I really do. I believe that I've been called to 
uh, bring forth, help people walk in their purpose in the earth, communicate to them who they are, what they should be. Uh, I believe that what God has called me to do is to help those that can't see who they're supposed to be, identify who they are and begin to fulfill the purpose of God in their lives. That's what I believe. I believe I'm a general in the kingdom of God. And I believe that before I close my eyes to this earth, that will be completely manifested. I do. I believe that. That's what I believe. I believe I'm called to help stir the gifts in people, bring them forth. Hallelujah. You are who God says you are. You're not who even you feel you are. You're not who you say. Listen, you got to align with what God says you are. And when you do, your life will show that. Hear me here. If you are more intimate with who people have said you are and you continue to repeat that, you'll become full of that. You'll be consumed by it. And you won't even recognize, won't even realize it. Therefore, we have to be jealous over the words that we release. Sometimes people will say things to me and I, and I reject it immediately. Not because I'm not trying to, you know, come at people because I'm not trying to take offense. I may not say, you know, I, re- I, re- I reject that. But in my heart and in my mind, I reject that right out of hand. People, people, so I'm, I'm 55 and people will say, uh, you're old. I, I will tell anybody I am not old. I, I tell them there's a, there's a, you old. I'm not old. And why do I say that? It's because to me, old is a mindset. Old is a mindset. Because see, when I start saying I'm old, what I'm doing is that I will tell my body, get ready to shut her down. Yeah, get ready to shut her down. And I'm like, no, we got a lot of life to live. I tell God, I'm trying to live to be 133. I've said that for a while. I was born in 1967. I'm looking to be 133. That's the year 2100. But now I tell God, okay, God, I'm looking to live to be 100 and we're negotiated after. We'll negotiate after that. That's what I'm doing. I, I go, I work out uh, three to four days a week. I try to drink my water, try to, you know, eat right. Bless God. Give me some exercise in to help me to get to where I say I'm going to be. But I don't let people say that I'm old. I, so I reject things. If people, if people uh, say certain things about me, I'll reject it. Because I'm jealous over the words that are released over me. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not receiving that. You parents, <coughs> I have small children. People want to say, your child bad. Reject that. Don't let people say that. Be like, yeah, no, no. What they did may be bad, but they're not bad. Stop, t- stop, stop uh, telling your kids they bad. And then wondering why when they grow up, they bad. Because you have created that. What they did was bad. But they're not bad. Hallelujah. Be jealous. Be hungry for who God has stated that uh, you are. So we can be consumed with that speech and not anything else. If my God tells me, if my daddy tells me I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath the linen, not the bar. Guess what? That's what I want to be consumed with. I hate being in debt. I do because Bible says I can be, I'm the linen, not the bower. Down as I'm looking to be completely out of debt. So I'm looking for how to invest. Amen. Not just throwing my money around, but how to invest because I'm going to be out of debt and I'm going to be a blessing to the kingdom. I'm sure enough, Lutley. I'm looking at how I can give more. Are you here? I, 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 I believe that one of the manifestations, one of the things I need to do in here is to be a giver, to help the kingdom of God go forward. People have got a lot of good things that are my lane to run in, but I know they're my lane to help in. Hallelujah, but I want to get off track here. But be hungry for who God has said you are and be consumed with that speech, not anything else. What we want to do is study what God says about us and let his thought about us and what he has said about us consume us. So that is what we think. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hallelujah. As I stated to you before, we're creative beings. And I submit to you much we face in our lives today is because we've created those situations with our word, whether good or bad. 
people, you know, some people, they don't want to let people know how blessed they are. Listen, it's not a sin and it's not a crime to tell people I am blessed of the Lord. My children are blessed. I've got a good job. I've got a great wife. There's no harm in that. I'm not being braggadocious. I've created that situation with my words, not because I'm such a wonder, not because I'm better than the person next to me. It's because there's a creativity that flows out of my words and there's a purpose for which God has in my life that I am walking out and fulfilling. And part of what that purpose brings is what is surrounding me. I've affected the lives of my children, the lives of my wife. Hallelujah. The life of my wife. Hallelujah. Because of the words that I say. There's no shame in that. Don't be shamed. Don't let people shame you into talking about the blessings of the Lord. And there, and also, I tell people, I got this somewhere, so I can't say it's original, but I say, I, I reject every invitation to pity parties. Why do we think it's okay to get with people when they're down and wallow with them and just talk about what was me. No, 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 no. I'm not coming to that pity party. I can hear what you're saying and then let's come out. Let me invite you over here. Yeah, that was bad, but how about this? Yep, that wasn't right, but how about this? We got to stop going with people to their negative situations and let them know that God is on the throne and he has spoken purpose in their life and they are victorious in Jesus name. Now stop wallowing in that that happened to you. Maybe it was, yes, it may have been bad. Yes, it wasn't right. <clears throat> I'm not saying that it was, but what I am saying is that uh, who God says you are and what he has in store for you is much bigger, better and more powerful than what you've gone through. Let's strap up and let's do this thing. Hallelujah. Our words create. How about we create the situation around us? Parents maybe have spoken, you may have spoken ill over your child. Speak positive over them. Speak positive over them. Speak their purpose and who God says they are instead of the behavior they're displaying. Instead of prescribing the behavior of the child to who they are, reinforce who God says they are while coming against the behavior. Like I said before. That thing is bad, but my child's not. What they did is bad, but my child is not. Using the words like that was wrong instead of you are wrong. One shows how the behavior is bad. The negative thing, the other shows how the person is bad. Hallelujah. So we can show that that behavior is bad, but not the person. And we need to be mindful of that. Think about this. Adults remember the negative words spoken over their lives that may have opened the door to the character issues they currently have. They can remember that teacher that spoke negatively, that mother, that father, that uncle, that brother, that sister that spoke negatively. negatively. And over all the good things that have happened in their life, they remember those negative words. Don't lie, because words have power. Words have power. Character issues that are completely out of alignment with who God says they are and who God has created them to be need to be corrected because there's power in our words. People have a propensity to believe the negative over the positive because they're surrounded by the negative. And we have to change that. We have to change that. People are not inherently bad. They're not. They're not. Because God is good and we are made in the image of God. Unfortunately, because of environments, because of what has been spoken over them, said over them, they've bought into the lie and so they act that out. What has my whole discussion been about? We'll go back to the scripture, Proverbs 18, 20 and 21, death and life and the power of the tongue. You can change your situation because you have the ability to create. And I want to encourage you to align with Holy Spirit and who he has called you to be. Agree with him, regardless of how you feel. You say, preacher, well, how can I do that? You start by studying who God says you are. Who does God say I am? Let me say that about myself. You may be in a situation right now. You may be in a financial problem right now. Stop saying that you're broke. Stop saying that you're never going to get out of say that, you know, Father, I made some mistakes. I made some bad decisions. But Father, I am who you say I am. 
And I ask that you give me the wisdom to get out of this financial situation, that I can walk in the abundance that I know that you have in store for me, that you have released to me. Begin to change your, change your environment, change your words. Your word, saying, saying the words about yourself, saying who God says you are doesn't cost you a thing. It doesn't cost you a red penny, but it can change. I not, 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 let me rephrase. Not that it can just, it will change your entire life and the trajectory of where you're going. So people of God, one thing that uh, uh, I said, I, I've said this before a long time ago, the power of the word is in its application. You apply the word of God to your life. Who has he said you are? That is when you'll see your life's change. Stop speaking death and damnation over your life and over the lives of your children. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. God has a good plan for your life and he will bring it to pass. Partner with Holy Spirit. Say what he says about you. Reject the negativity. Speak the words of life. Jesus says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. How about we do like our elder brother and speak the words of life? God bless you. Thank you for listening on today. I know that you are encouraged in the word of God. And I pray that you will not just end with the good word. However, you will ask Holy Spirit on what you need to do in order to apply it in your life. The power of the word is in its application. And when we partner with Holy Spirit to apply the word, that is how we'll be sure to grow. I encourage you to invite others to join you every week for a new episode of Fundamentally Speaking right here or on our other digital outlets. They will be blessed and encouraged as you have been. So until next time, I'm reminding you that God has a good plan for your life.